All right, here's solutions to problem 58 off the math subject GRE practice exam. Uh, this problem, we have a circular helix in XYZ space, which you probably know what that looks like already, but I'm going to draw you a picture. Totally unnecessary. You don't need a picture for this problem, but I just find when people are studying this thing, it might help some people to have some sort of context. So XYZ space, there's my beautiful three-dimensional picture. Uh, X in the positive direction, I'll make that way. Y positive direction that way. Z positive direction up, if you want. Uh, and the x coordinate as a function of theta is 5 times the cosine of theta, the y coordinate is 5 times the sine of theta, and the z coordinate is just theta itself. So if I let theta start at 0, for example, then my z coordinate would be 0. My x coordinate would be 5 times the cosine of 0. Cosine of 0 is 1, so my x coordinate would be exactly 5, right here. And my y coordinate would be 0, and my height is 0. So this point is on my helix here. And then what happens is as theta increases, uh, let's see, cosine decreases, so I'm heading in that direction. Sine increases, so I'm going in this direction, and I'm going up. So this thing kind of starts to cruise around like this. And it's very hard to give it the right perspective in three dimensions, uh, but maybe I can leave it like that. Good enough. And you're like, well, it doesn't look like this right here is five. Well, it kind of is. One, two, three, four, five. It's really this point right here is five, but by the time I get to a y coordinate of five, I have a height, a height of five over here. So, I don't know. There you go. That's some pretty damn good three-dimensional drawing, at least I think it is. Uh, so here's a picture that you don't need at all of what's going on. What we have here are two different functions. We have, or two different ideas, I suppose. We have the idea of distance and the idea of arc length. Uh, distance talks about the distance, um, a straight line from a given point to a point on this helix. In this case, it's the distance from the origin, so right here to any point on the helix. Arc length, as I'm sure you know, talks about the distance if you traveled along this arc to a given point. So what I am told is that this function L of theta is the arc length of the helix from the point 500, zero, zero, from this starting spot right here, to some unknown point. So the arc length goes, maybe I choose this point, then I measure that arc length, or maybe I choose this point, and I measure that arc length, and so on. Um, and then the distance talks about the distance from a given point to the origin, not to this point 500 zero, zero right here. And what I am told is that for some special theta, the arc length is 26, and I'm asked what is the distance from that point to the origin. And the way I go about this is I remember the distance formula um, by remembering Pythagorean theorem. So Pythagorean theorem tells me that the that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I'm pretty sure you know what a, b, and c represent. So I could say the square root, or I could say c equals the square root of a squared plus b squared. So a and b, you could think of as the difference in the x and y coordinates, and c you could think about as the distance. That same idea works if we're in three dimensions. It's just now it's the difference in the x coordinates. So maybe x2 minus x1 squared, and the difference in the y coordinates squared, and the difference in the z coordinates squared. The sum of these three squares gives me d squared. So like a squared plus b squared e plus c squared equals d squared, I guess, if you want some three-dimensional uh, Pythagorean theorem. So you take the square root, and that gives you this distance formula here. That's how I remember it anyways. Um, and the nice thing about the distance formula is it also lets me remember the arc length formula. The arc length formula, all I'm going to do is apply the distance formula a whole bunch of times. So I'm going to pretend that I put infinitely many dots along my arc right here, and then I'm going to measure the distance from one dot to the next dot. And these dots, there's infinitely many of them, so they're infinitely close. So it's not really distance, but it's that idea. When I'm adding up infinitely many of something, I want to use an integral. So it'll be the integral from A to B, A kind of my starting spot, B my ending spot of. And then I'm going to copy the same basic idea of this formula. So I got the square root of, the, the sum of, the squares of, the difference in the x, y, and z coordinates respectively. But the difference in the x coordinates, when these guys are infinitely close, I could think of as dx d theta, or dx dt, generally speaking, but in this case, uh, my variable in these parametric equations is theta. And similarly, I'll have dy d theta, and note these are all squared, and dz d theta. Um, so this gives me my arc length formula, which is kind of nice when I have parametric equations. So what I will do are use these two formulas and solve this or solve this problem which will be kind of straightforward, at least compared to some of the other problems we've been doing. That last one was brutal for me anyways. 
Uh, okay, so let's see, in this specific problem, uh, where do I want to write this? I'm going to write it down here. My arc length is equal to, my starting spot is when theta equals zero, because when theta equals zero, I'm at this point five, zero, zero. And my ending spot, I don't know, maybe I'll call that theta naught. Uh, so I'm going from zero to theta naught. Uh, is this how I want to write this? Yeah, sure. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write this slightly different. In le instead of L equals, uh, what I'm going to write is L of theta naught equals 26. So I'm saying that 26 must be equal to the integral from 0 to theta naught of the square root of uh, dx d theta squared. dx d theta is the derivative of this guy right here. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. So I get negative 5 sine of theta squared but you may have just squared that whole thing in your head, but I'm going to write out lots of steps just in case people need them. Now the derivative of 5 sine squared, same idea, except now the derivative is 5 cosine theta squared, 5 cosine theta squared, and the derivative of theta with respect to theta is just the number 1. Uh, okay, generally speaking, anytime you're doing these arc length formulas, you're going to have to, I don't know if this is always true, more often than not, you're going to simplify what's in the radical because taking the integral of the radical of some junk tends to be really hard. Um, and this problem is no exception. Negative five sine squared, let's write this all out. Um, negative five sine of theta squared, I could write as 25 sine squared theta. And five cosine of theta squared, I could write as 25 cosine squared theta. And if I felt like I could factor out a 25 and have left sine squared theta, whoops, plus cosine squared theta, And then don't forget, that's just the first two terms. You also have this plus one out here. And that works really nicely because the Pythagorean identity tells me that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta just equals one for any theta. So this is 25 times one plus one. So what I'm saying is the integral from zero to theta naught of the square root of 25 times one plus one, which is 26 d theta. And that's gotta be equal to 26. So let's, uh, evaluate this integral here. Um, I guess I would get 26 theta evaluated from, let's write it, why not? Uh, the square root of 26, there's my variable. I wanna evaluate that thing from zero to theta naught. Uh, so I get square root of 26 theta naught. And what's that equal to? Oh, that's equal to 26. Wait, 26 equals root 26 theta naught. What is theta not equal? Well, divide both sides by root 26, rationalize maybe. I don't know, one way or another, you'll figure out that theta not is equal to root 26. Oh yeah, duh, root 26 times root 26 gives me 26. I have theta not, it's root 26. That's not my answer. I wonder if they lifted that as an answer. Uh, it doesn't look like it, no, rat no rationalized form. Theta not is root 26. That gives me a lot of information that tells me which point I'm talking about here. So I've traveled a distance of root 26, so just over 5. My height is just over 5, uh, so I'm just past this point, talking about somewhere up in here, I guess. Uh, and what I want to know is what is, the, what is d of theta naught? What is d of root 26? Well, d of root 26, I can figure out. It's just the length of this line right here. Um, and to figure that out, I just want to know what's the difference in the x-coordinate squared. Well, the x-coordinate, the origin is 0. The x-coordinate right here, I could figure out using this formula. It's 5 times the cosine of root 26. Uh, similarly, the difference in the y-coordinates would be 5 times the sine of root 26 squared. And the difference in the z-coordinates would be 26 squared. And I can apply that old Pythagorean identity again. Uh, I just have a plus 26 hanging out at the end here. And then here I have uh, 25 cosine squared. Of, okay, let's write it. 25 times cosine squared of something, root 26 it turns out, uh, plus sine squared of some, that same something, turns out to be root 26, plus 26. So I get the square root of 25 times one plus 26, AKA 25 plus 26, AKA 51. So my distance is root 51. Let's see, 51 is 17 times three. 
so I can't um, simplify that radical, so I'm just staring, looking for 51. Hey, there it is, B. Looks like the answer to this question would be B.